Okay, salutations dear viewers, and welcome to the Forever Skies demo. Before anybody starts accusing me of, like, early access clickbaiting. Now, the thing is, there's a holiday event going on at the moment, and nobody knows how long that's going to be going on, that allows you to lift a time limit. Kind of a soft time limit, but... A time limit, nonetheless, in this demo. And the thing is, if, when they lift it, if the demo's still available, or maybe they'll keep it in, either way, you can give yourself certain advantages by kind of cheesing the opening bit, because your time limit doesn't start until you first launch your airship, and I found a way of cheesing that. I'm probably not the first. I don't even know when this video is going to go out if the game ends up being released in, in like, early alpha before then, th this will be a moot point. Well, things typically only end once. So, a quick summary of the plot. Well, a quick summary of the plot, as I understand it. Uh, humanity sort of destroyed the planet. We fled, but disease went with us, and we're down here to try and find the source of the disease to facilitate a cure for our family? Question mark. The so Sagittarius 2 went silent for months, then this one signal and silence again. None of us know what awaits you there, but if there's a chance they have found the virus, then maybe we can survive. So, here's our objective. Let's grab a med kit. These won't open. So, emergency procedures. Got some debris scattered around. We're gonna need this in a minute. Now, first of all, our health is low. Let's use the med kit. That'll improve our immunities. Not that I've. In this demo, the whole immunities thing is not fully developed because it's a demo of a game that's not even in alpha yet, so. There's a scanner. Now we go like full Metroid. We scan everything. Metroid Prime, specifically. So that's broken. The computer has no power because that's broken. Scan the canned water. It is drinkable. Also scan. Eh, yeah, lost it. We can scan you though. Scaffold. Yeah, that's a synthetics cluster, and the spindlier-looking ones are metal clusters. Also, metal there. Glass, which is probably the rarest right now. Everything's been screwed since we found that damn virus. We're all getting sick, equipment is breaking down, and then there's this Noah situation. Flower blew, blew out again and the door is locked. I'll check the beacon tower. I'll check if the beacon tower has a compatible battery. Do you remember the forests? So up here we have these sun melons and a corpse. Navigator's body. There's a solid state battery, and that will allow us to unlock the door to access the rest of this area. And critically, what we really, really needed for plot wise is to actually access the data on this computer. 
Though it went crazy, the bastard stole the sample and our airship. The radio doesn't work. That's probably his doing too. We're stuck here. We're sick and can't work. If we'd known about what awaits us beneath the dust, we never would have gone. For whoever reads this, find Noah. He's doodling these signs everywhere. Easy to spot. Be careful. He's dangerous as all hell. So now we can go through the doors and access the rest of the area after a bit more looting. Yeah, Noah's artwork. It's all because of this damn dust. Noah heard voices. He was mumbling about nature surviving everything, even the fall of the world. He said that he knew what to do so we could return to Earth again. He wanted us to help him he, to follow the voices in his head. Lunatic! We locked him in a cell for his own good, but the bastard hit the extractor and ran off while everyone was asleep. So, we need food, because we're hungry, so... Old food ration. I didn't scan it, but it's safe. And the water, the canned water, is also safe. The biologist. The whole crew of guys here. And a cask. And that gives us what we're meant to do with the airship. Now, if you do happen to make the mistake of eating um, the sun melons raw, you can get photophobia virus. I'm going to demonstrate photophobia virus because I know the curative. The research notes indicate that the like whatever is in these things cures it. So if I eat, nope, didn't contract it. Got another. Dead crew member. Or dead expedition member. So, we need to grab the fabricator. I'm gonna set it up in a temporary position in here, because it won't be staying. And, critically, we need a deck extractor. Now, we don't have the raw materials for it, and to gather them, we need a deck extractor. But, the bits we've been gathering give us those raw materials. And now we can build a deck extractor. So this is basically your harvesting gun. These resources go right into our inventory. We can also harvest bigger things. Certain rooms can only be accessed by harvesting them first. Now, you can move all of this stuff after it's placed, which is something some survival crafting games don't feature, which they really should. Thing is, anything in the sort of inventory or, like, say you move your water purifier, you lose all the water in it. If you move an engine, you lose all the fuel in it. So you don't want to move stuff that has uh, consumables attached to it, because that will wipe the consumable. More flasks. You will sort of come to rely on the, uh, the floating tumbleweeds of things, because th this is where the kind of raft influence, I feel, comes in. 
you know, throwing out the hook to gather stuff, but in this case we have a laser that does it. And we're in the sky instead of the middle of the ocean. And everything here is much prettier. So we're supposed to scan the engine, because we need the blueprint for an engine if we're going to build an engine. We need to build an engine if we're going to go anywhere. There's an electric cooker, free electric cooker. Again, not its final home. Just setting it down. Now, where was that bottle? The pickle. Okay, well, I have to place it first. So, one of the things we really need here is a water purifier. That's going to take a second. Let's gather resources while we're waiting. Slap this here for now. And now we can take this bottle. Go out in search of dirty water to purify. Now, the water purifier at present does not require resources for purifying. It just sort of does it. Plunk that in there. Printing completed. Okay, so we've reached a point where now I need to engage the cheese mode. Photophobia virus. The photophobia virus is wearing us out. We've almost completely switched to a nocturnal lifestyle. These damn insects could help, but we have no means of catching or cooking them. I managed to grow a plant that can help. I had to put it in a high point in like sunny places. I just need to examine its fruit with the senses. So yeah. I'm gonna like try to give myself photophobia. I already tried that, but I guess my immunity level was too high. Just because I'm trying- I want to demonstrate it. So let's take- okay. Uh, not the med kit for now. Take the sun melon. Eat the sun melon. So we have photophobia now. Now, the way this works, if I look at the sun, which- where is the sun? Yeah. The virus hurts you when you look at the sun. So, the curative? Lobster chili. Boom! Photophobia's gone. Now, you can avoid all of that just by cooking the stuff before you eat it. Now, here's the thing. The build module is necessary to construct components for the airship, but you need a solid-state battery to make the build module. The problem is, is that right now you'll notice we have no time limit, but the moment we set off in search of another one of these, we're going to be under that time constraint, and it's better to, to maximize the airship now. So, here's the issue. Take the battery, doors close and lock again, can't get by. Unless you're a crafty, sequence-breaking, you know, like I am. Go upstairs. Actually, I could have just walked over here, but... Okay, this little, little rusty outcropping here is something you can stand on. So you want to jump on that. So, once you're, like, stairs in your face, you're in the right spot. Crouch, and you can weasel your way past the locked door. So now I can construct the build module and expand the airship before I take off. Which is what we're going to do. Where is it? Build tool, whatever. Because, yes, this starting block of an airship is not great because, again, to maximize your time, you want to be able to go as fast as you can and go as high as you can as quickly as you can. Printing completed. Now, you could try slapping two engines and two uh, vertical thrusters onto this, but my god, are you going to have your work cut out for you? It's also better to have two of these positioned in opposite directions on the ship. So, what we're going to do is just... 
get rid of this stuff. Now, if I remember my design, I like to think that I do. Now we're gonna free out like that. So I do want catwalks. So I want to move this door a bit. Put it amidships, because that makes more sense. I want a matching one on the other side. So now another set of catwalks. And I think we're out of metal. Easy fix. Well... Okay, that's 10 metal. Medics aren't looking nearly as ex nearly as depleted. So one of the things that we can do, give this a yoink, slap it over on this side, get some of this goodness. Oh, that's metal. Okay, metal retrieved. So, theoretically, we can now finish our catwalk. Okay, that's our catwalk done. I can worry about the metal flooring later. There are far more vital things like another deck extractor. I said we wanted two, we're getting two. Printing completed. So I'm gonna put this one facing aft starboard question mark. I'm not super familiar with nautical, you know, hijinks. So now that can, you know, grab from that direction, and this one be forward port. So this gives me a pretty expansive arc on either side of the vessel, because I can basically cover most of my left arc and most of my front arc with this. So we got a good split here. Those metal deposits are out of range of this grabber. Oh. Sneaky beaky. Thank you. They drift in line of this one? Eh, kind of. They're too far out. Oh, oh, oh. Gotcha. Because we still need, um, actual drives on this thing. <laughs> we still have no power. A little bit of water left. Yeah. Start new purification cycle. Put my current full canister in there. Gonna make another water canister. I usually like having three. Oh, metal deposits. Did I miss it? Printing completed. Ah, I missed it. But it's gonna be swinging around the other side of the ship. Ah, that's why we build two.
Yeah, the synthetics are, are by far the more common floating, you know... Tumbleweed is what comes to mind when I see these. Like, floating airborne tumbleweed. Okay, let's... Okay, that went off. Here's... Can I build an engine? Yes, I can, because it's comparatively cheap. But again, we want to take off with two, count them, two drives, because that increases our speed substantially, and that speed is going to be essential for maximizing our time in this demo, or at least what we can explore in the time we have. If the holiday thing, you know, just becomes an integral part of the demo, which I wouldn't hold your breath, then it's... Because there is, like, an RNG element, I think. It's not all fixed. So being faster improves your chances of making everything work the way you want it to. There we go. Metal is what we really need. But the metal, the metal float weeds are rarer. Now, the thing is, it's a good idea to put your engines in a place where they're accessible from your catwalks, because uh, if you need to refuel mid-flight, you might be a little hosed if you don't put them in a place that can be accessed by the catwalks. Just something to consider, you know? Printing completed. I know the engine has no fuel, I just built it. So glug glug, glug glug. That's one drive. The RNG's not being super friendly with the the metal float weeds. I saw one. I'm not crazy. Can we get those before they drift past the front? <laughs> hey, do we have enough for a second engine? Yes, we do. So yes, this might seem uh, a little dull, because I'm just sitting here doing stuff, like waiting for the, the flow weeds to bring me goodies, but again, this part of the demo is not under any time limit, so you can you do yourself the most service by getting yourself configured, sorted, here, now, while this is going on. Up soon. Printing completed. Printing yes, completed. I can access these from my catwalks. Printing completed. Need a lot more of these synthetic tumbleweeds because that fuel. Up more metal. And more metal. And yeah, now it finally starts showing up once I've built most of what I need it for. Isn't that always the way? So, fuel. Printing completed. I like keeping a spare full tank worth of fuel. Printing completed. Which is two of these fabrications, by the way. Printing completed. I may 
may have overdone it. Oh, ooh. Lots of metal. I turn my back for two seconds and all of a sudden all the metal float weeds start popping out. Yeah, that's 50 metal. Alright, so. Final, final steps in terms of situating ourselves. So. Uh, in order to augment things like water and food. We need a water condenser and we need one of those... Fishing lines for the moths. Hydration completed. So, I'm gonna put the water condenser out here because this is so chunky you can't really walk past it. This also lets me visually acquaint myself with its current condition. More metal. Although right now I'm equally as in need of the synthetic compounds, which are more common. Printing completed. So that will basically start generating water in exchange for synthetics, which, like I said, are commonly found floating around out here. It's basically a resource that is almost infinitely renewable, because they're just here, floating around. But it does take time to generate the water, and is somewhat labor-intensive. Now for food, I'm gonna build an insect catcher. We might actually catch some insects because our food situation is not great. Although, there is a way to remedy that. I can bypass the locked door. Grab these Thank sun you. melons. Back around the sneaky little route that I found. There we go. And just cook these for food. Finally gonna put the, boi the boiler to some work. And we need a fashion allure. Printing completed. And we're going to catch ourselves some bugs. But important bugs. water for the cooking. Actually, we're already ready to refill another bottle. And now it's getting busy. And scan these. Hopefully those there'll be an opportunity later. So now that we are going to be traveling soon, it's time to resituate some of this kit. Got a bite. So three bugs wears out your lure. You can wait on replacing it.
chunk. Yeah, why not? Okay, so the airship is effectively done. Final resource pulls, so that we're ready for building the turbines, which gives us more vertical control. Once we actually have the blueprint for that, because that's a problem. We don't start with that blueprint, and they require more batteries, which, again, we don't have. You know what? I think... I think we've been kept waiting long enough. Now, I could swing around and gather the glass and so forth from this location, but our time is going to be kind of precious. Um, yeah, there's still glass over there, but I'm basically just going to press forward into... Nom, nom. To our next objective. So now we're going to be on the clock. I can never, like, stop interrupting what I'm doing to gather more flo float weeds. So let's... Alright, so now we're on the clock. We're taking off. We're going to the light. left my heading a little bit left because, well, the wind is going to push us right where I want to go. I'm good at, I'm good at windage adjustment. Let's just put it that way. Oh, right. I don't have space. That's going to be a problem. Yep, you can see that we're actually, like, drifting right where I want it to go. Yes, we'd be doing, what, 13 kilometers an hour if I only had the one engine, which is why I built two, because now we're, we're here. We're just bang, zoom, done, we're here. 